Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Saturday, March 31st at 12, 12 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Take a look at the GFS total snowfall through April 10th. Again, this is through April 10th, and what you're looking at is 42 states in the continental 48 with snow cover. There are eight states with over a foot of snow, and there are five states showing 24 inches of snow. I needn't remind you that winter is over and that spring is when crops get planted here in the upper Midwest. And that doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon. We'll get to that. Where is the Goracle when you need him now? Erie's hunt for buffalo snowfall record does not seem to be melting away. In fact, the GFS models are showing at least six inches of snow in Erie, which would meet, match, and or break the record. They're only six inches away, and we're going to be watching that very closely. So this snowfall comes in several waves. Easter Sunday, you're looking at snow in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Snow in Nebraska, snow in Wyoming, snow in Montana. Snow moving into Missouri. Some snow in northern Maine. A little bit in Michigan. As we step this through quickly by Monday morning, the snow is going to move all the way into Pennsylvania with heavy snow. Out here in western Maryland and West Virginia. Then heavy snow covers Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota with up to 16 inches of snow by Wednesday in Wisconsin and Michigan. To add insult to injury, the snows start pouring in the models down into the southern regions. Arkansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Utah, Southern West Virginia, Virginia. Welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum Pattern, folks. Let's take a look at the models here. You can see that that low spinning across the Northern Plains and then a lower Southern snow event. It's going to bring hail and terrible conditions that right through the center strip of the country there. Then the models get a little shaky, but there's another northern event right where the planting areas are, covering it with more snow. Now, this is a nor'easter that's inland here that's going to wreak havoc. Heavy wind, isobars, thunderstorms, another snow event coming all the way down here to North Carolina on April 7th. And again, the pattern repeats. This is snow plunging all the way down to New Mexico on April 10th, hitting the pan, the Texas. Snow in Texas on April 9th. According to the models, folks, welcome to the Grand Solar Minimum. Winter hanging tough the first week of April. Winter's relentless grip over here. Baltimore. Breaking records back into 1894 here if it snows in April. Here is the coming down on cycle 13. Very similar spot to where we're at right now, 1361 in TSI. I'll leave you links to that article. Where is the Church of Climatology when you need it? Pay your taxes, folks. 
It's going to be snowing till May. Frostbites Valencia region suffers 35 million euro in crop losses. These are frozen trees and frozen fruits. The region of Valencia has reported suffering significant production losses in fruits across thousands of hectares of farmland due to recent poor weather conditions, namely freezing conditions. According to the Valencia Farmers Association, the bad weather has reportedly led to an estimated area affected of 7,500 hectares of farmland, leading to a likely loss of more than 35 million euros. That's a huge dent. It's over 50% of many of the crops, up to 70% losses in some of the fruits. Volatile Saskatchewan spring brings record lows as cold as minus 39C hits in the first week of April. Biting cold is bearing down on most of Saskatchewan this holiday weekend, and Environment Canada meteorologist says not to expect any reprieve until after the first week of April. 146 people died due to exposure in Saskatchewan over the last decade. Temperatures across most of Saskatchewan are between 10 and 15 degrees below normal for this time of year. So don't tell me that minus 40 is warm. Last April 7th, Saskatoon was experiencing record-breaking highs between 20 and 21 C. And we're talking minus 39 C, a difference of 70 C. Boom. Are you listening? Are you following us? In just 24 hours, it's April. <laughs> Snow stacked high as crews begin to plow Glacier Sun Road. Plows encounter heavy snow accumulations as they begin the annual snow clearing chore in preparation for the summer. A rumbling fleet of snow plows and excavators began the daunting task of clearing Glacier National Park's roads last week where the global warming alarmists claim that the glaciers are melting away and it is never going to snow again. Record-breaking snows in northwest Montana. It's going to take weeks to clear these roads. I'll leave you links to this. <laughs> Winter storm expected to create dangerous travel conditions Saturday morning. 8 to 12 inches through Grand Rapids, Duluth, Ashland. Accumulation of 6 to 10 inches as possible with the heavy amounts from Brainerd to Grand Rapids. Hiding Easter eggs this year may just mean throwing them in the nearest snowbank. At least that could be the scenario this weekend if a fast-moving snowstorm expected to start late Friday, March 30th, comes to fruition. According to the National Weather Service, they've issued a storm warning from 7 p.m. Friday to 7 a.m. Saturday for travelers. <coughs> there are the snowfall totals up, uh, up here. Accumulations of 6 to 10 plus possible with heaviest amounts from Brainerd to Grand Rapids, east towards the Twin Ports and along the south shore of Superior. Heads up, Spring! Just normal. That's normal weather. Now let's talk about uh, over in England here. This is in Limerick from the Limerick Leader. They issued road safety warnings as heavy hail is forecast for the weekend in Limerick. This is after 36 vehicles involved in 12 hail-related crashes in six hours took place in the last 24 hours. Deadly storm in the last 24 hours. Massive hail hits parts of Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, and India. At least eight people were killed, 100 injured, as massive storms dub heavy rain, large hail in Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, and India. Crops and hundreds of homes were badly damaged. Large crack in the East African Rift is evidence of the continent splitting in two Coming from the watchers, look at the crack. We've been seeing seismic activity from the tip through the Rift Valley over the last four months in epic proportion. And here again, 3.2.
quakes of note coming out of here uh, in Afghanistan over the last 24 hours. Nothing else significant, thankfully. Large ash falls and acid rain from Vanuatu volcano. This is Ambe. I'll leave you links to this. They let people go back to this tiny island and their houses are being crushed under the weight of volcanic ash and their crops are being destroyed and they're starving. Worldwide Volcano News update. Reventador, Sabancaya, Ibico, and Ova all erupting. Space weather is on the uptick. We have an active region turning around the limb, creating sea flares, <coughs> as well as numerous B flares over the last 24 hours. This is bringing the KP up into quiescent range, which is dropping down uh, the, volcan or the earthquake activity that we just saw. The earthquake activity had ticked up down here in this low region. So we're going to be watching the effects of this spot as it turns around the limb. Here, SDO is upside down. This spot is actually over here, so that's not going to be very helpful for us. But there's where the actual position of the spot is. If we come over to Solarham, we can get some better information currently. And we're actually looking at the sunspot 2703, which is active region 12703, which is currently alpha AXX, 10% C flare, 1% M, 1% X. We're going to be watching this region. As we see, there is some minor mixing here with blue and red. So we have positive and negative mixing in the center here. And we'll get a better picture of this in just 12 or 24 hours. So we'll be able to look at it tomorrow. Blue moon to light up the sky ahead of Easter. Happening now. Go outside. It's not really blue. It just means the second full moon in a month. Which means really nothing. Except the month has to have more than 29 days usually for that to happen. <coughs> now. The blue moon is not the only thing that's going to be lighting up the sky. Let's talk about Tiangong 1. The world is watching as the Chinese space station hurtles towards Earth and will make a fiery re-entry in the next 24 to 36 hours. I will leave you links to all the critical information, including the current trajectory and position. You just refresh this, it's live. And it gives you the, pos the position on the Cartesian map here. This baby is flying along here up and down and the zone of impact for Chinese space station still includes Iowa <laughs> heads up incoming we have a satellite and she's coming in folks headed towards Iowa <laughs> I hope you didn't plant the corn yet well, maybe that'll be good for heating up the soil. Who knows? But we have a Chinese space station set to smash into Iowa sometime on April 1st in the early afternoon hours. <laughs> and you can come here and track it and go crazy over watching this thing. Or you can just realize that there is a, according to this article, one in a trillion chance that you will be struck by this baby but those are good odds so if you currently play the lotto um, this will probably also hit you if you win same time and that's a boom guys I hope you got something out of the video we try to make it fun in the house here space stations are hurtling towards earth and if you live in Iowa probably towards your state that's gonna happen on April 1st which is Monday at about 11 a.m. so go outside and look up that's a heads up and a boom. Be safe, everybody. Times are changing. Chunks of Chinese space debris are headed your way.